Hello again, higher chemistry students, and here we will complete section D of unit two with part two, fats and oils. Fats and oils, as you know, provide the body with energy. Contrary to what you might think, you need fats and oils in your diet. There are three main areas that we obtain fats or oils from. Animals, vegetables or plant sources, and marine life. Fats and oils are examples of esters, so from the previous lesson, you know that esters are made when we react an alcohol with a carboxylic acid. Exactly the same principle applies, but we react a specific alcohol, propan 123 trio, which is commonly known as glycerol, but this time we react it again via condensation, but with three long chain fatty acid molecules. Long chain fatty acid molecules are just carboxylic acids, but we'll talk about them in a second. Glycerol, one, two, propan 1, 2, 3 trial, we can see a diagram of it having the three hydroxyl groups, therefore known as a triol or trihydrocalcohol. So fatty acids, as we said, long chain fatty acids are just carboxylic acids that have many carbon atoms in their chain prior to that carboxyl group. Normally, the chains are even numbers of carbons in total, anything from four to 24, but more commonly, 16 or 18 carbon atoms within the chain. Fatty acids can be saturated, therefore contain carbon to carbon single bonds only, or they can be unsaturated. That means they can contain several carbon to carbon double bonds. Depending on how many carbon to carbon double bonds are within, the carboxylic acid, that can change what we call the degree of unsaturation. So when we form our fat or oil, bearing in mind it is an example of an ester, three condensation reactions occur. Each of the three hydroxyl groups reacts with a long chain fatty acid. Now they can all be the same or they can be different fatty acids. That ultimately just depends on which fat or oil you are making. So a typical fat molecule would look something like this. We can see the three ester links and we can see the long chains of carbons to the right hand side beyond the carbon double bond oxygen. If you look at these carbon chains, you can determine whether the molecule is a fat or an oil by a little deduction. If the hydrogen atoms are more than double of the carbon atoms specifically within that long chain beyond the ester link, then that will be a saturated tail. If the hydrogen atoms are less than double, then it will be an unsaturated tail. Fat molecules contain saturated tails, Oil molecules have unsaturated tails. We know we make fats or oils via condensation reactions, joining together by removal of water. Therefore, we can break down or hydrolyze fats and oils by removing water. If we look at the diagram shown, we've highlighted one of the ester links, and every time you hydrolyze a fat or an oil, you always break the ester link in the same position, always between the two oxygen atoms as shown by the blue line. So we hydrolyze or break apart the three ester links by adding in water, and that will ultimately get us back to our one mole of glycerol and our three moles of fatty acid, always in that ratio. If we use an acid catalyst to do this, we have our basic hydrolysis. However, we can use an alkaline catalyst and we get a different product other than our fatty acids, but we'll talk about this in our next set of lessons. How do we tell the difference between fats and oils? Well, fats and oils are different in state. Fats are solid at room temperature, oils are liquids, and this is ultimately down to their structure. Fats are saturated, and contain carbon to carbon single bonds, whereas oils are unsaturated, containing numbers of carbon to carbon bonds. 
So if your molecule is saturated, it means the fat molecules in particular can pack really tightly together. Therefore, there are stronger forces of attraction known as van der Waals forces. Again, please don't worry about this. We will cover those types of forces in unit one. But because the forces of attraction are stronger, it ultimately leads to a higher melting point and therefore fats are solid at room temperature. We can see a little diagram of the carbon to carbon single bonds. Whereas molecules which contain carbon to carbon double bonds as shown in the second diagram are unsaturated. Because of these double bonds, the molecules can't pack as tightly together as the double bonds cause little kinks in the structure, which means the molecules aren't held as tightly together. So those forces of attraction holding the molecules together are weaker. Weaker forces of attraction lead to lower melting and boiling points, which lead to liquids at room temperature. And we'll talk about margarine. Margarine is essentially made from a vegetable oil, such as olive oil or sunflower oil, but it can be spreadable like a fat, like butter. But we'll talk about this in the next slide. You can see simple diagrams of how to represent fat molecules on the left and oil molecules on the right. Note that the oil molecules don't pack so neatly or tightly together, and that's down to the, the double bonds causing kinks throughout the structure. Like I said, margarine is made from oils like olive oil or sunflower oil, but it behaves more like butter, which is a fat. Why? We can take oils and we can harden them by adding hydrogen. This is called hydrogenation. By adding hydrogen to an oil, you break some of the double bonds, emphasis on some. We don't want to completely harden the oil. We just want to harden it enough that it becomes spreadable. So in hardening the oil, we break some of the carbon to carbon double bonds, turning your oil into more of a fat. We do this under the presence of a nickel catalyst, and it's known as hydrogenation of oils or hardening of oils. At the start of this presentation, I said fats and oils are needed in the body to supply it with energy. You get a lot of energy from fats and oils, much more energy in comparison to carbohydrates. But they are also essential for transporting and storing of essential vitamins needed by the body. However, fats can have a detrimental effect on health. A high fat diet can cause things like hardening of the arteries, which could lead to strokes, heart attacks, etc. So oils being more unsaturated are thought to be better and healthier for you in the long run. So can you please complete exercise D part two and have fun.